Hello, I'm Average Joe, and welcome to Minecraft. We are in Snapshot 19W03C, and today I wanted to make a new workshop. So, the workshop I have right now is my second version. I had one before this that I didn't actually save. And this time around, I'm going to have just a regular Minecraft world. It's still going to be creative, but instead of like a flat land, it's going to be regular terrain generated. And I'm making a new world because the, well, Minecraft is getting a whole bunch of new content and stuff. And I don't usually do an update when there's a new, make a new workshop when there's a new update. But I figured... Uh, this time is going to be different. I'm going to make a new workshop. I'll probably keep my old one around, but so I guess I'm going to have two. But yeah, all right, let's see here. So I've built a platform here, and I've marked off my X and my Z. Y is just straight up, so that's not a big deal. And one thing I want to have... Well, and we're going to be building the main hub for this workshop. And I usually build it at 0, 0. And it looks like that's over an ocean. So, great. So... One thing I want to have for this workshop is to have everything in it have a function. So, like, um, there's going to be an engine that's going to power the teleporter and the lights and all that stuff. And this, what we're in right now, is going to be the engine room. Now, what I need to actually do is design an engine. Now, one thing I'm planning on doing is pretty much just having... So, an engine is going to need fuel. And what's going to happen, at least what I plan to happen, is the fuel is going to go into a dropper, and, it's go and the dropper is going to spit it out into the lava, essentially burning up the fuel. And that can be something I can go and look for in the world if the hub runs out of like fuel. And I got rid of the X marker. So I'm gonna need a minute to design this engine and then I'll get back to you guys. So this is the engine I've come up with. Uh, it doesn't have a specific fuel source, so you could put whatever you want into this. So if I put like TNT in there, it'll start working. So the way this, this engine is meant to be the power source for the hub, which is gonna be like starship or whatever and the way this works is you put the fuel source in here and every time it dispenses something as in it falls in there it activates this comparator it turns on this dropper which is full of seeds and it throws them into this chest and then it just feeds into this dropper, which outputs a signal as long as there's seeds inside of it. And you can, and this is where all the seeds going into the other dropper come from. They go in through this hopper and into there, and it just spins them into here, and etc. etc. This is another input where pretty much. Uh, every time a pulse goes through, it will get rid of one of the seeds in here. 
and a pulse needs to go through as long as there is a source of power being used in the hub. Right now, all we have is the engine, so there's no power being used. I do want to add maybe an item filter onto this so that only a specific fuel can be used. Um, but for now, just throwing anything in there will probably be fine. So, what next? Well, I would imagine we'd need to make this actually look like an engine and also give the engine something to power. Like uh, maybe some lights for this room, which is eventually going to be the engine room. So it's been a while, and I think I have this kind of thought out. So let me just throw something into here really quick and charge up the engine. So when the engine has something in this dropper, which is its output stuff, it will send a signal down in through this main line, which is white, into uh, room lines, which are maybe going to be different colors, I don't know. But the room line for the engine room right now is going to be blue. So if you want to turn on power to the engine room, you hit the blue line and it'll send power to the engine room, but it'll also send a signal through the black line into this, which will slowly drain this dropper a lot slower than it filled up, uh, just in case you're low on fuel or whatever. So you can stop that from emptying out by turning off power to rooms. And I think maybe the main line will just be um, along something else. So if there is something in the room using power, then it'll send a signal rather than if there is power being sent to that room. I think. I'm not sure if that made any sense. Basically, white line is power in, black line is power out, blue line is send power to things. Uh, I was going to apply power to the lighting for the engine room, or for the hub in general, but I think there's a minor lighting glitch in this snapshot because I had to update the chunks whenever the light turned on because it only updated the chunk I was standing in for some reason. So I'm probably going to stick with just these in this room. So Yes, we have a sort of functioning engine, and it's going to that stuff. I'm not sure if there's going to be a line for doors, but I think in the engine room, I'm going to have like switches for sending power to different rooms. And uh, those switches will only work if there's actually something on. The black line will only be powered if there is something on in the room that's getting the power. I still don't know if that made sense or not. But yeah, engine is set up. Um, this is basically a battery, and this is a system to drain the battery when something's being used. Uh, just to make it a bit more, I don't know, dynamic? Interesting? Whatever. So this is going to be used to power everything. 
and unfortunately I couldn't figure out how to make it so that the the um, the more you have on the more it drains I couldn't figure out how to do that uh, so I'll figure that out eventually and it looks like we ran out of power right so the only room we have right now is the engine room which means the only line we need is the line to the engine room um, so yeah I guess now it's time to make the engine actually look like an engine I feel like I could have built that better but I think it works and now it's raining so everything on the inside is still the same there's now an input for a fuel input right here there's a power outlet right here it's the gold block and the input for uh, power usage is the emerald block right there it just if you power the emerald block it'll unpower the torch and it'll start this hopper clock which will empty this dropper out currently I don't have anything going into the blue line the black line but if I just power this it'll start emptying out that right now I have the output going into the white line so this is the main power line and each of these is going to go to a room you can shut off power to a room here or you can shut off power to a room at the room I do have three switches here even though right now the only room we have is the engine room uh, which means this is probably the room we're going to be building first who am I kidding we're already working on it I'm sorry I haven't collected my thoughts on this very well what next well I suppose a fuel tank might be in order we could put it next to the engine room or in the engine room okay so a fuel tank so let's say we have a tank here I'm just gonna mark it out with iron for now and a tank here and they'll be linked to each other so or should they be okay so I think I have fuel storage and fuel transfer down so these will be the tanks and if we want to send fuel into the engine or reactor or whatever we're gonna call it uh, I pull this lever up and right now I have iron blocks and both of these to act as the fuel so you pull this up and it'll go into this elevator send it up and go along and into the fuel import on this you can hear it's starting to dispense those items and power is starting to go up and right now I have the white line put directly into the black line uh, just to make sure that the power will slowly go down but yeah if one tank runs out of fuel then we just uh, start up using the other tank and that one will start emptying out now I have set it up so that we can fuel the tanks from this end here but we can also do it through the top if need be uh, but right now um, I think it's time 
to start decorating the tanks. I just need to figure out how I want them to look. Maybe some red, some blue. It would be nice if I could like show how much was full. Yeah, that's interesting actually. What if I took a comparator and some random half slab, I put it here and put this here and redstone lamp. Now all we do is turn that off, put something in there. Cool. All right. I don't think I can put comparators on top of chests though. All right, well at least I can have like a display for when the tank is empty. And if need be, we can hook that up to something to activate to say once this is done emptying out, empty this one out. Right, so those are our fuel tanks. We have something to let us know when they are empty. And I now I need to build something for this pump here, except that that's going to be going over a light source. So probably take that light source out and put in a new one when it becomes a problem. And because that's a pump, it needs a different color than blue. Um, red? Yeah, let's go with red. How exactly are people going to know that's a pump? I mean, those kind of look like tanks, but so does this. And I mean, they can tell it's different because of the, because of the different color, but still. Uh, I'll figure something out. I don't think these are going to require power. But that one might. Which means this is probably going to need a manual fuel input. And this is going to need to be hooked up to a power switch. So, let's say this one is for engine room, or engine room, I think I spelled that right, and let's give that a lime wire. So how are we going to want to turn power off to this? Actually, I think that might be relatively easy to figure out. Just take a piston, sticky piston specifically, put that there. Then we just run the line into the piston. Alright, so if power for the engine room is off, like it is right now, then no fuel gets added to the engine. If we turn it on, and... Okay, so maybe we sh this is the point where I should get rid of the white line into the black line. And this is probably a good point to set up a manual fuel input here. 
let's say, mm, from here. Yeah, I think from here works. Mm, yes. From there, there's going, there should be a chest, and then close that off, or at least, like, something to hide that away. Alright, so this is the manual fuel input. And there's still not a filter on this thing. Perhaps we should add a filter to that. Anyways, now that there's actually power going to... There we go. So, if I turn this off, and I give this... A little bit of whatever we decide is fuel and this is going to start filling up but nothing's going to like go out if we pull this then that starts working and if we flip it up right Now what happens if we cut the power while that's working? It'll keep doing that. There used to be a bug where like uh, powering a piston while it was facing up would keep it face up, but I think they fixed that so that won't be too much of an issue. Right, so if that is up, then there's power going to the pump, which means we need to take a black line from this, I think. And run it into a pulse extender, not a very long one, obviously. And then we send that signal into the black line. Right, so since the pump isn't working, there is no power, there's no signal going to the black line, but if it was working, uh, I'd need to put repeaters here, and that's it. It would be nice if there was a way to tell how much power we had. But I'm not sure how to do that. I can figure it out eventually, I'm sure. Okay, so just because power is going to the engine room doesn't mean we're using power. So... That's good. There's a black line running from the engine room to the engine. Okay. So let's say if our fuel was redstone, which I think it might be, we put that in there. Then we actually turned on this. Then if we hear this going... 
Yes? Alright. Yeah. So the pulses are turned into just a regular thing, they're run down the line, and they're put into the engine. So fueling the engine costs power. And now we're not fueling it. But we're still getting... Yes, we're still going up. And lights aren't used by the engine. All right. Um, what else goes in an engine room? Well, I could not for the life of me think of what else could go in an engine room. Uh, but what I did do is I put, is I cracked open the engine and I actually put a filter on it now. So if something goes in, the engine takes redstone now. So if something that's not redstone goes in, it goes into this hopper, which pushes it into this chest that we can't open, but can still be accessed by hoppers. These hoppers will take it out of the chest and throw it into this dropper, which we can take out and put into something else. Now, this is a pretty big filter buffer, uh, so this probably won't need to be cleaned out very often but it will need to be cleaned out at some point. As for what else can go in the engine room, I haven't got an answer to that. I went and I looked up what, could go, what goes in an engine room, and I mostly got answers for like real life ships, like boats and submarines and things like that. And a lot of the things in there uh, aren't applicable because this is meant to be a spaceship. Like there's something for uh, pumping water out or for uh, things like that. And for oil, which this doesn't use. And we don't really have an equivalent. But at least now the engine has a filter, but now we don't have a manual entry for fuel. We could add one above, like put maybe a dispenser up here and have like a walkway going up to that so we could just fill it in. And that's probably what I'm going to go with. I just need to actually put together a walkway to the top. And doing that might require us to raise the roof of the engine room a little bit. So we'll see where all that goes. Now, one thing I thought about was doors putting a door to another room in here, or a hallway, or things like that. And I tried to figure out if it would be a good idea to add doors to this list of things that take power away from the engine. And I think that is something I want to do. On the other hand, don't think it would be a good idea. So let me explain. If we have doors that only open and close when there's power coming from the engine, then it's inevitable that doors are either going to automatically shut when the power goes out or automatically open when the power goes out. If they automatically open, when the power goes out, uh, that's fine. But if they automatically close, we can't get 
to the engine room. At the same time, I wanted some doors outside of the ship. So if the doors automatically open, all the air would go out, and... Yeah. But now, saying it out loud, I think it would be best if we added doors to the engine and had them automatically open when the power went out. So there's a really simple door I know how to build and it just needs like a pressure plate And, and probably have to use this. It needs a pressure plate. And let me just build a mock up really quick. So, this is the really simple door that I know how to make. And yeah, that's a really simple door. But this is the wiring, and I don't know how to make it so that this needs another power source. Well, actually, I do. But right now, the black line goes directly under this. So, setting it up would be a little bit of a problem. But that's alright, we can just pull the black line out and run it, like, along here. So if we wanted doors to need power, we could build it so that, let's just use orange, like this. So if the piston gets power, uh, If the piston gets power, then the door works. And if we take, but if we take the power away, then the door stays closed. And I think I know a way to work around this is by having every door be powered like this. Uh, yeah, like this. This would make it so that when... Oh wait, not like this. Like, uh... Okay, not like that either. There. Now, as long as there's power, the doors can open and close. But when there is no power, the doors stay open. And this does nothing. And to be fair, we wouldn't even need the piston in that situation. Yeah, okay. So we could do it, in fact, make it even easier, like that. So we would put doors on that one. And make it an orange line. Then we pull the signal from the orange line into every door. 
just gotta see how far this goes right all right obviously the door's got to be pulled out a little bit more I didn't think of that but you know but then we just need to take a signal from orange wire it to black and then we lose power as long as doors are working well I think that might be all the time I have for this episode right now um I tried thinking of what else could go in an engine room and I couldn't think of anything so I just put some scaffolding up so that you can get to the uh, manual fuel entry point. I also added a maintenance hatch for the engine. And it says you're not supposed to go in here while it's running. But you're probably fine. You just got to be careful. I might make something... To keep people out when the engine's running, but we'll see. So, I started building up the walls here. I'm not sure this is exactly the style I want to go with for the hub, which is meant to be a spaceship, but it certainly looks spaceship ish. Anyways, uh,. The engine room works, the doors work, uh, there is nothing past the doors, so I'm going to have to build a hallway in between episodes here. Uh, but yeah, yep, this is the engine room, minus the roof and the final design for the walls and floor and that. And yeah, so if you guys can think of anything else that might need to go in an engine room. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you think we should do something different with the doors or how the engine works or how any of this works. Uh, let me know and I will make changes and or take it under consideration, things like that. Um, if you think the door should be shut when the power is off, uh, let me know about that too. Uh, yeah, just any ideas you have, put them down in the comments. This is going to be my third version of a workshop. I think I said that already. And it's going to be the first one I've built uh, for YouTube. So, yeah, we will see how this goes. Uh, this has been Average Joe, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.